Welcome to Now We Nerd Reviews. Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. Quantum Mania. So we're What's here. What's up, Twitch chat? We're here. That's right. On Twitch. You can come hang out with us on Twitch live as we do this chat with us mm -hmm. in the chat. Yeah. But, of course, if you can't, you can watch us on demand or listen on podcast services and at youtube.com forward slash at Unite We Nerd. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, for this review, we have Joel back. Hey, guys, I'm back. I didn't leave, but what's up, everyone? <laughs> You're ruining well, the illusion, got... Joel. Stop. The immersion right. is broken. <laughs> uh, okay, fine. Fucking God damn it. All right. <laughs> I'm Marcelo. Introduce yourself like a person. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Just so y'all know, this, this is this is post lightfall energy. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell what's on our minds right now. <laughs> it's not man. I I want to see Mando and Bad Batch. I want to. That's that's where I'm at. But yes, lightfall too. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff that we're gonna be talking about. Um, March is busy. Okay, so March so so busy. here's the here issue i have guys okay oh well, damn he's he's ready to go he's Here we got go. his issues has he has not wait Mar Marcella, any time <laughs> quantum mania was like a, okay here's my here's my two minute quantum mania it's all not right. even two minutes quantum all mania right. was all right it was better than thor <laughs> but the issue i'm having guys is, thor i oh, want to be able to by the way uh, spo spoiler spoiler territory spoils territory no no yeah, no spoilers been warned. what i'm, what oh, I'm well, about to no talk spoilers. about has right. that, this is about destiny i'm talking about destiny this is what's more important than quantum mania uh-huh all right Go for All it. Right. Oh my! I need God. to find a way to be able to route my PC to my living room TV and still be able to use my controller. Because you know what sucks is I'm holed up in my office and I can't be with the family while I game. You know, so it's like I'm trying to figure that out. But the, besides having to you, buy the DLC again, can't can't you like cloud stream with Steam to your TV? Is that, something, are you is, talking that, is that something that what the fuck are you they, talking about, Brian? <laughs> Steam used to have a you, you used to be able to buy like a dongle for Steam, so you could. Um, oh, he said dongle. We're done. You could. It's That's basically it. no. Can't no, monetize this video anymore. Oh well, no, that's okay. We weren't monetized to begin with. <laughs> oh, but yeah, weren't fuck. you weren't you able to fucking like do something so you can like cloud stream like Steam games on your on your TV? I feel like that solution's already there. You're just not looking hard enough for it. That's whoa, all I'm saying. Whoa, whoa. All That's right, all I'm all saying. Right. Quantum Mania yeah, was thick. not looking hard enough. All right. <laughs> Damn. Came out. Swinging. Hey, just call, just just they just 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 putting it out there. <laughs> I Yo, feel like they're the, ready to. I feel there's solutions. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're discovering this. Anyways, Marcel, right why don't you tell us why you didn't like Quantum Mania? It was all right. It was. I mean, it was fun. Uh, there was no Luis in it, so that was a problem. You I was know, surprised by that a little bit, actually. Yeah, me too. I'm going to be honest. So, yeah. Well, yeah, also, we didn't see T.I. Well, I think we know why we didn't see T.I. as well. Um, <laughs> but the guy, the other guy, the Baba Yaga guy, David Masticillion, I'm saying his name wrong, I'm sorry. He actually got to voice the character, so that was pretty cool. He oh, was the guy right. with the holes. So Baba Yaga guy got to live again really? in Pennsylvania. That was him. Wow. That was him. Yeah. Good on cool. him. Cool. He got to be in all three. Um, I just want to say first and foremost, before we really get into it, um, I don't know why people are really hung up on Modoc. Like he's supposed to be fucking dumb. Like people are really on it about him not looking cool. Like, you know, if right. you know any of the source material, he looks like a fucking piece right. of shit. If I mean, I'm he's sorry. stupid. Dude, like, what are you? I don't even know. Any, any, any visual effects artist out there that has free time, I, 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 wholly, you know, send you this challenge. Try to make Modok look cool. I, I just <laughs> try, and I'm not gonna go for any of this. Like, oh, what if you make him like a fully mechanized being? No, he needs to be that pasty white ass, brown hair top, just sitting in a fucking. <laughs> Floating yeah, chair, Doc Ock with stubby body. Try to make that cool. I dare you. I mean, Modok had that dumpy though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, J 
Jameson's in the chat. He just reminded me <laughs> people putting up the side by sides between um Modoc from the movie and then George Lopez from Spy Kids. Oh hell yeah. He <laughs> sent me that too. Oh no. And Spy who did, Kids who did George Lopez walked so so uh Modoc could fly. Okay. Let's be real. <laughs> um yeah, so I, I also just want to say uh, the ensemble, I think, was pretty strong overall. I know they have a lot of people to juggle, but they introduced all these new characters, like the Mind Reader, Mind Reader, I forgot his name already, and then the Warrior, Jintora. Um, they just, they did they made their mark, they're done. If we don't see them again, that's okay, but, you know, right. it's cool. And, you know, they, they played their part later as well. They, you know, f- you know, one's serious, one's like comedic relief. I think they did that pretty well. But, uh, Marcelo, right. are you back? You want to tell us your qualms with quantum mania quantum mania I mean, and before we go into that i'm just i'm just gonna i'm just gonna say this now a uh, spoiler if you haven't watched the movie yet i don't know why you're here already. you should you should go check it out and come back one two and hang out with us all right marcelo big spoilers on the way hey right, marcelo the thing for steam exists guys we're good i told 150 you bucks. i told you man i told you um so i mean quantum so back to quantum mania it was it was good it was all right you know just kind of am i just marveled out is that what this is am i just am i feeling a little are you, burnout are you feeling are you feeling the burnout feels like it i don't know i'm just not interested i mean now here's you know, a question are you not interested in ant-man or have you just been no, not I, interested I, I, I love ant-man i like the first movie mm-hmm. i like paul rudd yeah i mean no. who doesn't like paul rudd right no i mean I could think of one person. You know, I, it felt to me like Cassie was very one-dimensional. I, I don't feel like they used her in the way that they should have. Hmm. It was good. I mean, in, in general, it was all right. I don't know. I'm just like, you know, uh, the whole, you know, Kang was a great villain, but man, Kang was a great yeah. villain. Oh, he, yeah. Oh, yeah. He definitely commands a room, you know, and... uh couldn't call this movie Kang. That's why they had to call yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, oh. definitely a, my favorite part, which is gonna, I'm gonna jump straight to the end, was you know he forgot he was filming an Ant Man movie, he was filming Creed three for a second on Scott Lang, and he was <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Creed two point five, man. It was, was Creed two point five for sure. That was his training. Yeah, he had to he train those muscles, man. This motherfucker, he was he's working ripped, for sure, dude. Like, fuck, I mean, he's doing Creed and Ant Man, a Marvel movie, so yeah, he's gotta be jacked. Um, yeah. but. Yeah, I, I, I like Kang, so I'm excited where they're going with Kang. Mm-hmm. People were upset. Oh, yeah. They were like, oh, I thought this guy was supposed to be able to body Thanos and all this and that. But obviously, you just have no understanding of the other, what's like the other Kangs that it's are just, coming and stuff like that. one Kang. Right. Yeah, that was just one. <laughs> one hella good one still, too. <laughs> they got lucky. I, mean, uh... I, I, I love this theory, or I love this idea, though of i read online Mm -hmm. that this whole thing which i'm gonna just jump straight to the end really quick just because that's fine that's where i'm at in my mind that's fine let's talk about kang for for three hours i don't care let's go portal opens up go ahead no go for it i was gonna say so portal opens up at the end uh it closes and then uh they're stuck there for a minute right Mm mm-hmm it would have been way cooler for them to have opened that portal back open again for them to step through and it have been like years later or something right where kang has already taken over or some you know like because they're in a quantum mania time works differently mm-hmm. so i was like oh that would have been way cooler like something a little bit more like impact even though oh, i did laugh yeah. my ass off with his like ending monologue where he's like we did save the world, right? And it's like all doomsday music. Dude, I that was actually really everyone. good. They that, went really that was dark. Hella funny. That was funny, but I was like, I would have loved to see the ending be a little bit more like, oh, it's been it's been 15 years since you've been, been gone. That would have been such a risky move for a, like a family movie. Oh, I would have loved it, though. That would have been right? so Right? It would have been good. I feel like that would have been, been so solid. Risky. Like we would have been the only ones maybe who would have liked it too. <laughs> Everyone else would be like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> like I thought it was weird because it seemed like they were really going to go for like a a Scott and Hope stuck in the quantum realm like type of deal. That would have yeah, been a Disney yeah. Plus show right there. Bam, yeah. guys, we could have made Disney so much. It's money. probably on the way. Let's be. Well, let's be real. Well, I thought that would have been like a way to get um, Cassie like 
gearing up for like Young Avengers because it's obviously they're they're gearing Ooh, yeah. up for Young Avengers. Yeah, yeah. So, but they didn't even write Cassie very well. Like, so she's a genius. Like, she knows how to work quantum fucking projectors and stuff. Like, I just wish I would have had a little bit more development around that because she gets arrested for protesting. Cool, I get that. You know, you're fighting for a good cause. But all of a sudden, you can repair something that fucking Hank couldn't repair. You know? Yeah. So, it's, it, you know. They're it did seem that they kind of had a little bit of issue with, you know, just placing things because for being an Ant-Man in the Wasp movie, like I thought about it after a while and I was like, yeah, the Wasp were like, Hope wasn't really involved until like near the end of the movie. Yeah. Nobody really, it was just kind of like, it's a family movie, but we're split up. Yeah. Was dealing with her family though. I thought that was pretty funny. Where she, where her parents, who are much older, were talking about how they have needs. That that shit made me laugh pretty hard. <laughs> oh, that's that's yeah. been thirty years, Hank. <laughs> of course, I was with someone. I I laugh. You know, Michelle and Pfeiffer, of course. Bill Murray. Yeah, and you know, I they gave Michelle Pfeiffer way more time, which I appreciate. Of course, she's she's Michelle Pfeiffer, right? She's great. Um, but yeah, um, me and my wife were talking about too. Is it because like she was outspoken about certain things? It kind of dialed her back. I wonder, kind of like, uh, almost like production problems with Black Panther. Like, I wonder, but oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I know. Was this filmed during the pandemic? Probably some of it, huh? No, I think this was filmed post pandemic. Mm, curious. I, uh, you know, um, keep talking. I'll dive. I'll dive yeah. into a little bit. You know, it had its great moments. Uh, again, mm-hmm. the scene where with like the the probability stuff that that scene was oh, really that cool was, that was i great. mean fucking beskin robbins paul rudd that shit was so <laughs> funny dude why am i here <laughs> so for good. cassie yeah for cassie for cassie for cassie but um, you know for just, me the the cg is a little crusty you know at least it wasn't dark i'm just glad the movie was like you could actually see what was going on in the movie mm-hmm. so Filming officially started in f- February fourth, twenty twenty one. Um, and as far as like the CG What's goes, I don't like. I'm I'm willing to give it a little bit more of a pass because there's some scenes that look really nice. Um, mm. but also at the same time, I feel like what the general audience doesn't realize is that right now in the movie industry, visual effects artists are being treated like shit. Yeah, so being swamped. So we're probably we're probably seeing the after effects of the pandemic plus like visual effects arts just being put into crunch nonstop for these yeah. fucking spectaculars. Yeah, and Disney's notorious for that too. We just found out recently, right? So I mean, really I mean, like... probably every mo- big yeah, yeah, but money they, they just got busted. studio. Well, yeah, yeah, they got they got they got shot on four K live. Yeah. Um, can I ask you guys this? Yeah, go for it. Before you, before you ask, Brian, um, yeah. do you guys feel like this is almost like kind of like a adventure Star Wars movie, almost like with the aliens and kind of spacey feel and stuff? As long as they weren't aliens, you know what I mean? Do you feel like it could have been that almost? Like, I know Peyton Reed's worked on the Mandalorian, but it almost felt like that kind of bled into this movie, which I never problem with, but I felt like that almost have been like it's like ant-man goes to space <laughs> i mean he has been but I mean, do you guys get that feeling at all i mean i've, I've heard that comparison as well and i i i kind of see it like you get you get that kind of like star warsy star trekky you know lost on like a, a strange world that you haven't seen before mm-hmm. like the the scene where um hope um and the rest of her family is stuck in like that weird forest area it kind of reminded me of felucia a little bit Oh, you know, just a very, a very Pretty colorful like Felucia, you know. Um, Felucia. But yeah, I mean, I I could see how like some of that influence would start to you know bleed through, especially with just like ship designs and you know just how things function technologically in this world, and then mm-hmm. like the creatures that they have to make up for you know all the weird locations that the quantum mm-hmm. the quantum realm can provide. Um. 
you gonna say, Brian, before I cut you off? Well, I was just gonna mention um uh Jameson in the chat brought this up about um how a lot of people are saying that Ant Man uh Quantumania felt like it could have been a Fantastic Four movie. And I actually kind of understand why, because technically the quantum realm is a Fantastic Four plot. Interesting. Okay. In the in the comics, the Fantastic Four are the people that discover the quantum realm, not Ant Man. So it's just kind of like they're they're rework they're reworking the idea of the quantum realm and then putting it on the next best thing because like Ant Man one had a little bit of the quantum realm just because of you know Scott shrinking down to like a very small size and whatnot and then mm -hmm. you know coming back up so it's kind of like the same thing how they made Ultron before Ant Man was a thing because in the comics Ultron yeah. was made by Ant Man but you know yeah. there was no Hank Pym there was no Scott Lang you know there's only Tony Stark what's the next best like tech wizard that the MCU had so it's it's just a it's just the MCU change like I I honestly I don't know what you guys think but I honestly like you know I'm not going to kind of hark on that kind of idea just because you know one thing was related to another set of people that it can't be adapted into like another story if it's at least okay. done decently like all right you know So what's what's next for this phase? Uh, movie wise, like, or just yeah, in yeah, general? just just movie wise. What's coming up next? next? Guardians of the Galaxy three. Yep. Guardians three happens Summer. in May. To Marvel is in November, just and then Secret Invasion we get soon, right? Secret Invasion we should be getting within a month or so. Mando and Secret Invasion. Fuck. So. Let me let me um I mean I know we we all we all want to talk about Kang. We all want to talk about Kang. <laughs> um so I think we all can agree that we like Kang in this movie. Like Jonathan Majors does a great job as Kang. He did, he did a great job in Loki, he did a great job in this movie. Yep. Um mm -hmm. I kind of want to get your guys' opinions because I I've been seeing a lot of people saying how they are actually they're actually disappointed with this king. Like they're saying, like, oh, King the Conqueror is supposed to be this, you know, like you're saying before, um, or so like oh, King the Conqueror is supposed to be like this, you know, Thanos killer, like level like threat, and you know, he ends up losing in the end. But it's just kind of like, well, this is only the beginning of this phase. Like, this is the start. Mm -hmm. Of Kang, so if you you only imagine where things can go from here, especially with the end credits or the mid credit scene, you know, with all the other Kangs, you know, I don't know. I just I just think it's interesting where people can go through. It. I just wanted to get your guys' opinions on on that statement where this is this was not the Kang that we were looking for. First, Marcel. Uh, well, there's all that. There's all that. Um... There's all this buzz about him being when he got sucked into that thing at the end, uh, into his battery, that he's going to come back as um. What was the character's name, guys? Uh. Fuck! What was his name? Uh, not the collector. The watcher. The watcher, yeah, or something like that. Was that is that what it is? The one from what if? I would... No, 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 no! Not the one from what if. Oh, okay. Uh, just like somebody that's like. Stupid, powerful. Hold on. Now I got to look this up. Uh... Talking about in Loki, the, the he who mm. remains. No, come back to me because uh, there was a character that somebody said that he might come back as that that would make sense in in the concept of how they're building this universe. I'm going to see if I can find it really quick. Okay. Um, oh. I just want to say, um, as far as King goes, I think they did amazingly writing, direction, of course, actor portrayal. Um, I, I just want to 
Now, I think people are still ha- hung up on Endgame for the best reason. It's a fucking great movie. Like it's oh, yeah. a ten year culmination of all these great movies. We've have characters have come to love, but I think people need to also let go. It's time to find a new villain, and you know, I, I honestly think. Kang should be able to take Thanos no problem. Like I think they wanted a straight like boxing match, Kang the Conqueror versus Thanos. I mean, he said he like in his intro alone, he's like, "I fucked up Thor, no problem, right?" And it's like that already puts him above Thor, right? Which anyone above Thor can pretty much start to contend with Thanos, right? So it, I don't know, yeah. just he's already super powerful. I mean, because that's my knowledge from the comics and like some TV shows. Like I already know he's fucking bullshit powerful and of course he's always stopped by the good guys which is gonna happen right but it's it's also like you were saying like we just got him it's like not a a fair comparison right like Thanos we had build up years of build up Kang it's like boom he's here it's like why can't he kill Thanos right now like come on man (laughs) give the guy a fucking chance he stomped the shit out of Ant-Man and almost won Ant-Man got fucking lucky because he turned his back okay like that's literally what happened like you saw how much he fucked him up already and like psychologically he enters he's fucking with like Cassie he he, you know Ant-Man bent over already Right, and he's like using like a little bit of telekinesis, <laughs> not even the full telekinesis to fuck him up. Right, I, I'm gonna defend King forever unless they really fuck him up. But it just, you know, people need to let yeah. go of Thanos, and maybe we will get that in Secret Wars. Like, like, oh, here's Thanos, and he's gonna be like nothing. So, so that's so. Thank you. That actually, so I found the person I was talking, the Beyonder. So the they're Beyonder. saying that he's. They're saying that. Oh. From rumors that he'll he got sucked into that and they're they're gonna use him and they're gonna blend Kang and the Beyonder as one character. Interesting. And that's gonna be the start to Secret Wars. Which that makes sense kind of, right? I mean I, mean, I think gone on less. Let's let's think about it this way. So we we can we can highly speculate that Kang the Conqueror went into the into his device and now he is stuck in this perpetual paradox storm right so we saw we saw what that was doing to scott you know they had all the other other ant-man and they're all kind of like you know having their own individual thoughts we even had like the baskin robbins (laughs) scott which i thought was funny as fuck yeah but then you know when they started hearing cassie through the intercom, like they all started like to converge together and just kind of like worked as a unit. So imagine what a Kang, like at least, especially the Kang the Conqueror, stuck in there with multiple versions of himself, mm-hmm. just plotting and planning and just like improving upon himself for who knows how long he gets stuck in there for. So I feel like that that idea that you brought up, Marcel, I think could be very plausible because this is going to be something weird because Thanos as a villain was very easy to kind of understand because it's very clear cut. It's like, you know, I am a, you know, I'm a very powerful being. I am gathering the Infinity Stones so I can wipe out half of, you know, the world's the galaxy's population, you know. Simple, clean, where Kang is like, this is the thing. Like, a lot of people were saying, it's like, hey, you know, it'd be cool if Marvel could get start getting all weird. Well, it's like, well, Marvel's getting weird really fast. And listen, the the best way to explain Kang's motives is if everybody goes back and watches the early 2000s Jet Li movie, The One. (laughs) (laughs) I'm no one's bitch. (laughs) That movie encapsulates Kang's uh his desires his very clearly desires yeah no but i think you know i think you know they have this amazing strong character you know Kang the conqueror was supposed to be one of the stronger ones but the isn't beyonder supposed to be even like a step above that or is Kang still technically i guess a stronger character than the beyonder cuz i'm not familiar I haven't read Secret Wars. I have no well, base to go off of anything. Well, let's just let me put it to you this way, just like an MCU sense. 
the end of Loki season one, right? You know, they kill like the he who remains is dead. And he goes back to the TBA and then finds out, oh shit, I'm in another reality now. And there's a statue of Kang. Yeah. It's a statue of Kang the Conqueror. But which Kang the Conqueror is it? See, that's that's the thing about multiverse that's going to be, I feel like, is going to really test Marvel and Disney. Whether or not they can simplify this just enough for casual audiences. Because multiverse is going to be fucking weird. Especially once you get the Secret War. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fucking weird. And you're going to have an army of Kangs. Like coming from all different universes and all different, you know, deforms and shapes. You know, we already saw some in the in the mid credit scene. You know, some oh, yeah. some some were questionable. Some were, you know, fucking just like yelling like they're they're at a football game. Yeah, that, that was, was crazy. a scroll one. That was awesome. It. it was so hype. <laughs> so we Ima- imagine being on set and having to have that many personalities. Like, yeah. <laughs> hey, Jonathan Major said he was up for it. So good on him. You know. He gets to play all these perversions of a character. So that's, uh, that's like an I was really, state, I mean, right? I was I was super hyped seeing in the second post credit scene, seeing uh uh oh my gosh, seeing uh Tom Hiddleston and uh Owen Wilson. Fuck, Owen Wilson. I was like, Oh, I can't wait that for Loki. Funny. That was yeah. cool. And and that there's another king right there, right? Who had yeah. whose desire to manipulate time, you know? Bruh. Yeah. Like I was already excited for season two, but that that cutscene like made me even more excited, especially when, um, they were talking and it was like, yeah, that's the guy I'm looking for, and then that that version of Kang locks eyes with Loki, and then you get that look in his eyes, like, oh, it's like it's like kind of like that familiarity. It's like, oh, I know who you are, and then Loki's just like, oh fuck, it'd be great. I can't wait for Loki. The hunt for Kangs. Yeah, man. Are we gonna get uh so just really random thought, are we gonna get like Moon Knight in a Marvel movie? I hope so. Been wait- there's no reason why no one could show up in anyone's property. I've been saying this for months. Like he should be able to drop in and kick anyone's ass and vice versa or whoever. Well, is he Honestly, part of a like a hero group? He's part of like few. the Midnight Suns, Defenders. He's an Avenger at one point. There's no reason why he can't. Honestly, it'd be cool. I think where it would make the most sense. Uh, there's a lot of stuff coming out. He could show up in Thunderbolts. They're kind of like military esque thing, and they might, or they say you know they have a problem in Cairo or whatever, or even the shows. You know, he could show up in Captain America. That makes sense too. You know, I feel I feel like Blade would make the most sense. That too. He's in London already, right? Yeah. So yeah, that Midnight Suns teaming up, dude, that would be dope. Oh, so I just I had that random thought at the end of Ant Man. I was like, are we gonna get like? I mean, She Hulk, whatever, whatever. She Hulk was okay, but like, uh, like I want to see Oscar Isaac and Moon Knight garb on the big screen. That'd be sick. With a movie budget, yeah. With a movie budget, yeah. See, they have to go back and rewatch Moon Knight now because I think what the first like actual, like strictly like Disney Plus show character that's going to be on the big screen first is Miss Marvel. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's that's like she's, this year? she's the first new character that's going to be in a movie. That's awesome. That yeah, movie's going to be Captain sick America. too. Didn't that didn't the Marvels get pushed back a little bit? It did. No. Oh. To November. So, I, initially it was supposed to come out last year and then they pushed it back, I think. Oh, okay, yeah, but it's it was, still coming it was, out it was, this year. It was year, supposed then. to come out in the summertime. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um um uh, we're gonna go ahead, Joel. If you... I'm just gonna say, as long as we're talking about Kang, that first they they were teasing him for like half the movie, and I was like, when are we gonna see him? When is he gonna appear? When are we gonna get Kang the Conqueror? And of course, shows up like a badass. And his first real interaction with Ant Man is is something else, and just I I think they really the the tease they just really showed him really well, and you know, and even with um. Janet, like, like, oh, I'll help you, and then she finds out what he really is. That was a nice touch. Like, he's just, I'm just like a traveler, right? right? And that was, ooh, it's just showing how bad he was, you know. As, the ugh, so the act, the acting she did for that scene was just great. Like, she, those, 
she's already a really good actor, but like, damn, like you could see the yeah. fear on her face. Yeah. It was really well. Um, we have some questions. Uh, questions from uh, Jameson. Um, any any opinions on Michael Pena being left out of this film? That was and the also, reason I gave my that my movie was such a low score, Jameson. <laughs> <laughs> and also our thoughts on the recasting of Cassie Lang. Um. Uh, okay. So the reason they didn't do it is they wanted to get right into the Quantumania, right? You know what they should have done? They should have given me a Louise recap in the beginning. I didn't, instead of Scott Lang's little little uh, intro, the room to grow. Whatever. Book. The, you know what the I, movie was about. The movie was about the family. You know what I would have like settled for, like a quick, like a, like Scott doing his little monologue in the beginning and just doing a quick pan of like their security like company, and then Michael Pena's character just like being basically like the head honcho like running the business like like yeah. all up in a suit you know making making them deals picking up their phones i would have loved that yeah. it would have been great yeah. um uh missed opportunity jameson if i'm being honest yeah i don't know why they they it did so great like the past two movies i maybe they thought the joke was over i maybe we'll get it in a show maybe i don't know you find there's a Luis clone in Secret Invasion. He's gonna recap all the scrolls at the end or something. <laughs> Maybe he is a scroll. And oh. recast oh. them to Cassie Lang. Uh, I think it's fucked up that she found out through social media that she got recast. Yeah, I think that's probably that the worst really? part. Really? I didn't hear yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So she found too. out through social media that she got recast, which. You know, I feel like if you're going to recast somebody, just be honest with them. Tell them, hey, you know what? We're moving in a different direction. I don't think the person that replaced her is is bad. I, I really liked her character. You know, maybe she had the stronger acting credits, which I think was what they were going for. Because mm -hmm. uh, the, the person that plays Cassie was in this movie that I really enjoyed called uh, Freaky with Vince Vaughn. So she was really good in that movie. Oh, Vince Vaughn's so uh, many movies? Hell yeah! So he, he's a uh, nice. he's a uh, it's like a it's like a Freaky Friday movie, but he's a serial killer that swaps oh. body with the woman that uh, sounds funny with the woman from uh, Ant Man. Okay, uh, with Cassie, and it's just really it's a lot of fun. So that's just really it was like the animal slash fucking god damn uh, it the hot Friday. chick. There you go, the hot chick. Thank you, <laughs> Rob Schneider. Um, yeah, I mean shit happens in movies you know it's all business but i just think that she should have been finding out if i got anything through social media just sucks you know yeah yeah that's, that's, that's my that's biggest fair. takeaway from that that's fair yeah um i don't know you know as far as just like the actual role at least for me is considered like um uh catherine newton this person to play cassie lang i mean i wasn't I wasn't too put off by it. Like, I, I felt like she did a good job. Um, I felt like as the movie went on, I felt like I was getting more, com like, more, like, adjusted to her character. Because, like, at, at first, she, I kind of do agree with what you we were saying before, where she kind of felt, one like, one note-ish. In a sense, mm -hmm. but I feel like maybe that's just because Maybe it's because, like, oh, she's only, like, getting started in this, like, new, like, chapter of her life. And, like, she's trying to do all these things to be a hero. But she doesn't really know exactly what being a hero means yet. And then, you know, Scott's been too busy doing his book deals and whatnot. Which, by the way, um, I told you guys this a few days after. But the book is real. They're coming out with the <laughs> actual book. So, in... A few months, you can actually buy Scott Lang's book from the movie. I'll get it on Audible. <laughs> it's not narrated by Paul Rudd. I'm not going to get it. Sorry, everyone. Yeah, no. It's a it would be a total loss if they didn't have Paul Rudd narrate that book. I yeah. feel like he'd be totally down for it, though. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. It would be interesting to see what happens next. Because I don't know, because I want to see 
what would happen if like if there was like a team up movie or if she was in something else with another director maybe and seeing oh, how yeah. and right, yeah. doing doing the test to see if it's you know her or if it's the direction or it's just like you know maybe because since they started filming like you know early 2021 maybe you know things were getting rushed because i think they did have to do some reshoots for this movie i'm not entirely sure so i don't know if it was just like a, a rush kind of thing like thing um i don't know uh joel what do you, what about you did you what do you think about the the role change i you guys said everything I agree with honestly it, it is fucked up to find out through social media like hey you were replaced you know in a mega movie but you know if i again if like marcel was saying it's part of the business but again you know kurt's like hey we're going somewhere else it's that that's all it takes you know so someone just didn't do their job i guess um i you know i am a fan of continuity but i mean if it works it works right i do want to see like her reincorporation right we saw uh florence pugue return in hawkeye she still was shining so hopefully with Catherine newton we could see her somewhere else and really shine and have her moment you know mm -hmm. i think she did great in quantumania but you know my eyes were on kang I'm not gonna lie so <laughs> he's kicking ass but it you know good family fun movie with a badass you know badass villain yeah uh all right well let's see so we didn't really talk about this that much, but um, what do you guys think of like the subplot of this movie, where it's like we get to meet this, you know, village of displaced, you know, qu quantum realm residents, as it were, um, you know, getting these different species, you know, roaming around, you know, having. I I will say I did laugh at the part <laughs> when um, Scott and Cassie were being dragged to the little village. And having them all kind of chanting in a language you understand. And then Cassie's just like, Dad, drink the ooze. Drink the ooze. The ooze. And drink the ooze. I thought I thought that was funny. Um But yeah, just as far as just kind of like the cause when we when we talk about stuff like Star Wars, we always kind of like kind of grade it on like what you know alien characters do they incorporate into it. So what do you guys think about the you know the different beings that we got to see in this realm? Did you think, you know, was was it you know, all right? Was was it not enough? Was it too much? Marcel, how about we go with you? You look like you're you're pondering. It was all right. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, nothing stuck out right. of you. It's just uh, it's all campy stuff. It's, it, maybe it's just me. Like I don't uh, I don't remember her name, but I don't think she was like that strong of a character the like the the lead person that uh, little Gentora. island of misfit toys gentora yeah she was all right i just i just wasn't interested all i wanted to see was kang 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 <laughs> and then modok for like a second but even modok i was like eh. all right it's but funny well, but let's just talk about it. it's like the fact that they were reusing a character from Ant Man One to be Modok. You know, Dar we got Darren Cross coming back. Thought he was dead, but nah, he's just a big floating head. I thought they reincorporated him well and a nice little continuity it change. I mean, again, just you can't make Modok cool, in my opinion. I don't know, but they, they did. They took his goofy ass and made him goofy. They made him a punchline. He died thinking he was a hero with probably the one of the best lines in the movie, honestly. I'm an Avenger. Um, yeah, that shit was hella funny. Um, yeah, uh, as far as the band of misfits thing and the displacement, it was cool. Glad they addressed it. You know, they you know they were talking about it and good scene actually put it into action. But uh, yeah, just I didn't have a problem with it. I thought it was a nice little subplot, and of course, you know, because they helped them, they helped later storm, you know, King's Palace and whatever. I don't know, it didn't bother me. That was a cool scene. I actually thought that was pretty neat. Having fucking house is coming to life and fighting was pretty cool, though. That's pretty imaginative. <laughs> I I missed this 
and I had to I had to kind of see it in a clip, but <laughs> during the big battle, did you guys see that one of the one of the house beings got shot and was dying in another house's arms? <laughs> in the what? background. I don't know if I did. Yeah. <laughs> when when the, when this thing comes out, I have to like check that scene again because I need to I need to actually see that in, in real time. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Brian, did you see Marcel's message real quick? We can fix that later. But... Oh. Any uh, last thoughts you want to throw out there, Marcelo? It was all right. You know, Marvel. It was a Marvel movie, so you get what you get. Um, could have dealt with some more... Uh, some more... Uh, again, some more development of Cassie. Maybe a little bit more Kang. But, you know, it was good. I did not like it, you know. Sure. I mean, we got a shitload of King in the mid credit scene. I didn't think they were going to go. Yeah. yeah. That showed me they were going to go ham with all those Kings. Like, yeah, yeah. They're, they're hy- like you said, they're hyping each other up and shit. We got the scroll. Oh, man, it was just good. And seeing what I loved was they did the three goofy kings too in their weird outfits or whatever. It's like, all right, we're going full full goofy dumb mode. Let's fucking go. I want to see King be dumb and do like crazy shit. So I- I'm down. I think it's a good intro. Again, just Marvel doing a great job with villains back to back with this movie and Black Panther. I'm happy. I don't even know if N- the mortar is like a villain, if you ask me, but yeah. yeah just um yeah, I think I think that's all the time we have for this review of Ant Man and Lost Quantum Mania. Of course, uh, you know, if you haven't seen it already, we've been reviewing The Last of Us, so you can go back on you, our YouTube channel and of course podcast service to watch that. And of course, you know, Mandalorian just came out. We're gonna be doing that as well. But until next time, I've been Brian. That's been Joel and Marcelo. This has been United Reviews, and remember. Keep on nerding.